Hi, my name is Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and I want to use this video to actually introduce what the differences are between astrophysics and astronomy and the reason for that is you may be considering studying at university and you might want to do astrophysics, astronomy but you've got no idea what the differences are if there are differences. Now there are a lot of crossover between the two but there are some subtle differences which may work to your strengths or things that you don't want to do basically. Now if you're interested in these videos you find them particularly useful and actually if you found your way here and you're interested in doing or studying astrophysics and astronomy you may find this channel useful going forward because there are lots of things in there to help you along with your studies in the future and if you do then do consider actually becoming a member because I have lots of other videos in the member section as well as other benefits and obviously it helps generally support the channel as well. So let's say you're interested in space, astronomy, astrophysics but you don't really know what to study or to be honest, you might not even want to study, you just have an interest in it and you just want to know what the differences are between astronomy and astrophysics because they're not exactly the same. Now, if you are looking to maybe study at university, you may see courses kind of like this, really. I mean, I'm talking from the UK perspective. So we have courses here like astronomy, astrophysics, physics with astronomy and physics with astrophysics. There's obviously other variations, but that's just a sample of what you might get. You could have physics with planetary science that would mostly be focused on planets that sort of thing you might have physics with cosmology now i'm not going to talk about cosmology here because that's kind of a little bit different and i'm more interested in the astrophysics and astronomy now also it's worth noting that i'm also the program leader for physics with astrophysics at the university of lincoln so if you have any questions specifically about those sorts of courses then definitely leave your comments below so these are examples of courses you might see now, the astronomy part, this is actually the scientific study of celestial objects, I suppose space as well, and the universe. And if we go to astrophysics, astrophysics is the scientific study of celestial objects, space, and the universe. So very broadly, they're kind of the same thing. They're looking at astrophysical objects, they're looking at space in general, and also the universe. So what is the actual real difference then between the two well let's go back to astronomy so astronomy is focusing more on the observational side of it and then describing those celestial phenomena so it's about actually making an observation and reporting and describing what you're actually seeing and astrophysics is a little bit different in the sense that it explores the underlying mechanisms or the physics and theories behind these observations. So what you actually find is that some, an astronomer might go out and make some observations and they would report, ah, oh, this star is this temperature, it's this size, it's this mass. And then an astrophysicist might actually then decide or try and figure out why that's the case. So astrophysics is more the theory, the physics, more mathematical, I suppose, more theoretical, whereas astronomy is kind of more practical you're doing the observations, you're cataloging, that sort of stuff. So actually, if you're interested in more practical stuff, you like to go out and do observations, then focus on your astronomy. If you're more theoretical, and actually you absolutely hate doing experimental work, that sort of stuff, and you just wanna do the mathematics and the theory, then astrophysics is probably more your focus. So if you do decide to go and do astronomy, it's quite likely that you'll do some of your own observations. I'd like to say, hopefully, depends what facilities you have access to. Even if you don't make your own observations, it's quite likely you'll be given real data to work with. So on our courses, we do get to do some of our own observations with our own small telescopes. We also get to visit some of the big telescopes as well, which is actually really cool. And we also give you some real data as well, where you then need to calculate certain properties of stars planets maybe galaxies you'll learn the observational techniques so it's not just about pointing a telescope in the sky taking a picture measuring the brightness whatever there's a lot of extra things that need to be done there like data reduction how do you calibrate your images how do you know what you've measured is correct and how do you measure a faint object a bright object a fast moving object so there's lots of techniques that you can learn there 
And then you'll also learn how to classify the objects. So if we were to observe a galaxy, we need to know what sort of galaxy it is. And again, the astrophysicist would look more at why it's that classification or why they move along and evolve the way they do. So that's just a general idea of things that you would likely cover in astronomy. Again, there's massive crossover and you'll cover like core material between the two, but this is like the, the astronomy side that you'd likely do. So some examples, I suppose. Here you would actually look at a star and you would detect an exoplanet by the dip in brightness. That's an observation. So you're looking at the brightness of the star over time and that's a light curve there. Again, there are lots of other videos to explain what those actually are. But as a planet passes in front of the star, it blocks light out. We can then detect an actual exoplanet. So that's an observation. That's astronomy. Now, you would also classify objects. So here we've got a barred spiral galaxy. That's an SBB type. What does that mean? Well, it means that it's a spiral. It's a barred spiral. And then the lowercase b tells you kind of how young or old it is, I suppose. So you need to actually classify the type of object that it is. And also you've got a star there, that's a spectral class O star. That means it's a very big, bright, hot star. They're typically blue. So you, again, you'd make an observation, you'd classify it, you'd catalog it. And once you cataloged it, then you know maybe an astrophysicist comes along and looks at the population of those and works out why have we got more of these type of stars than others. That would be astrophysics. And again, if you're really lucky, you get to make your own observations. And if you're, again, going to go study astronomy, then it's quite likely that you'll either get to do your own observations with small telescopes. If you're really, really super lucky, you may get to visit some large facilities. Not necessarily to make your own observations, depends, but it'll be more observation focused if it's astronomy. So, if you then decide to do astrophysics, astronomy is not really for you. You don't want to do those observations because I'll be honest, having done the observations quite a lot during my PhD a lot of the time, it's quite inconvenient. It might sound fairly obvious, but you have to be out late at night. If you're using one of those large facilities, you've got to be up all night. And then what you typically do is you would spend the daytime looking through your data, planning your next night. So it can be very tiring. If you don't want to do that and you just want to do the theory, then astrophysics. And the sort of things you're going to do there is you're going to look at the theory of these astronomical objects. Why do we have different sized stars? Why aren't they all just the same size? How do they form? Things like that. You'd most likely create and look at computer models and simulations because we can't really grow a star, watch it evolve, watch it die. That's just not the case. But we can use existing knowledge of physics to build a uh, kind of an artificial one in a simulation and then we can work out why they do what they do. So that's what you probably do in astrophysics. And then we would work out or come up with theories and study why or how they form and how they evolve. So it's more around the theory side of things. Can be, especially now, it's computational based. It's quite, I want to say easy is probably the wrong word, but we can build models on the computer and we can run those. And it's quite easy to then run lots of those in different scenarios to see if we can replicate those observations that the astronomers have actually made. So sort of things you're going to do in astrophysics then, you're going to learn about planet formation and evolution theories. So instead of just observing them, we might have a particular population. For example, Earth-like planets are quite rare. Why are they rare? But we need to understand how planets form and how they evolve. So we need to make our theories and try and explain what we actually see. The physics of stellar energy generation. How do stars actually make energy in their core? And how does the heat get from the centre to the outer part? That also affects how bright they are. And there's a, an enormous amount of physics involved there. So if you do astrophysics, you're going to want a good understanding of physics. There's some quantum mechanics there. There's lots of interesting physics to explain or try and explain how stars work and evolve and how they transport that energy from the center. So a core part of astrophysics is this. And also the formation and evolution of stars. 
How do stars actually form to begin with and how do they then evolve? Here's an example of binary stars. Binary stars are quite interesting because we have quite a lot of them and they ex they're expected to kind of form together in pairs. They're actually forming groups in, cla in collapsing clouds and we see that the astronomers actually are imaging that. We need a model to actually replicate that on the computer as well. And also formation and evolution of galaxies. So this is one example here that we, we think is how galaxies form. And that's from the collision and the merger of smaller galaxies until they grow big enough. And we actually see that. So astronomers have got images with the Hubble telescope and other telescopes of galaxies actually colliding. So we can create a model on our computer and we can replicate what we see so we can work out how they actually form, how they evolve and things like that. So anyway, thank you for watching. And if you do enjoy the video, actually, um, you may find that the channel is quite useful for you if you do end up studying astronomy or astrophysics in the future.